to provide me this opportunity. Yes, uh, am I audible to everyone? Hello? Yes, you are audible, uh, Nihar. Yes, sir. Thank you, ma'am. So I'm going to present my screen. Uh, Okay, <clears throat> so I think uh, my screen is visible to everybody. Yeah, it is visible. Yes. So first of all, um, good afternoon everyone, participants, professors and others. And uh, thank you ma'am and Sopnil to provide me this opportunity. So today my presentation will be based on the 5G applications using Torang numerical software. So these are the evolutions from 1G to 5G. I think, uh, hope uh, you all this uh, know already. So I'm just uh, only for formal discussion, I'm going to with a momentum with this. So in 1G, we are getting only calls to the 3G, 4G. So now we are at the 5G. So currently 4G is going in where video gaming, mobile, everything is going in based on the, uh, this uh, OFDMA, means uh, frequency division, multiple access, uh, access and STFDMA, which is based on LTE and LTE advanced technique. So currently, these are the frequency bands. So for the GSM, uh, we started using from 600 megahertz to 6 gigahertz for 5G LTE 1.8 to 6 gigahertz, then 5G MM 24 to 40. So like that, near field communication, GNSS for RFID application. So these frequency bands are already, you know, declared by the telecommunication department. So for in India, especially in the trial spectrum for the 5G, it is declared for the 700 megahertz and 3.3 to 3.6 and 24 to 28 gigahertz in this range from India. So what are the benefits of the 5G? If you see the benefits of 5G, so we can make a smart home, logistic shipping, smart cities, industrial IoT, healthcare application, you know, some autonomous driving. So those facility can be available with the 5G due to the large bandwidth. So now, main question is, what is the requirement of 5G? You know the facility, but currently what is the going on? That is the end of for, but why we require the 5G? So if you do, uh, see the first point, then IoT and mobile will be more than 50 billion by 2021. And IoT device due to the scientific research and social media will increase the internet traffic and it will be nearby 40 petabytes per year. So it will be huge. So due to this YouTube video loading, Insta photograph, Facebook, social media, due to this, so nearby 2.5 quintillion bytes for data is, are uploaded every day. So therefore, the research community from the 2012 onward, they started uh, researching about the 5G network. So this is why due to this large data and large user, huge number of users who require the 5G. So if you see the back towards the research, then you can get the 389 number of journals published in IEEE Explore and 588 journals in the science day. So this is excluded from the conferences paper. This is all about only letters and journals. So by the focusing on the requirement of 5G, what are the challenges before us? If you see the massive growth in mobile data and higher data rates for users, massive growth in connected devices, higher energy efficiency, low latency rate, and cyber security. That is, this is a very sad because of you know large number of users and if we use bandwidth, we can get cyber threat. So there will be chance for uh, data uh, set and you know personal information loose that can be done. So how to control these things? So these are the key solutions you can see for the 700 megahertz. These are the basic coverage the where we can generate because to wirelessly connectivity increase the main part is the antenna. Wireless component is the antenna or Bluetooth those, you know, for hotspots. So that is the main part. Root part is the antenna. So if you see the 700 megahertz for basic coverage, coverage 3.5 gigahertz for high data rate per week and capacity, 24 to 28 gigahertz for fiber like data rate and capacity. So nowadays, massive MIMO antennas also, you know, may have requirement for beam farming, especially for the 5G application. Massive growth of connected devices, low latency. Rate. So these are the key solutions and challenges and requirement of the 5G. So now introduction to current solutions for 5G analysis. So based on the requirement of that, we targeted two things specifically. First of all, the mobile antenna design within the 3 to 10 gigahertz and 24 to 30 gigahertz. So in this higher range of frequency, our solver is able to solve this kind of problem. 
So base station antenna design, you can say 24 to 28 uh, gigahertz. So our the main primary focus is on machine learning implementation in antenna parameter optimization. You can see the antenna parameter optimization. So we are tar specially targeting to calculate the input impedance, radius and resistance, effective directly constant, feed location, size of the antenna, and safe generation. If you so safe generation, it is under the research now. We are generating, we are developing a deep learning model. If you give the antenna all antenna parameters like efficiency gain, uh, frequency range, and uh, what will be your polarization, those things, then that model will give you the exact safe generation by doing that you can generate your particular level. So this is why we are de de developing because nowadays, you know, to get the proper aspect for a proper size, proper polarization, everything to have a, uh, you know, proper design, uh, researchers are going to use their most of time. So that's why to reduce that most of the time we are developing these models and we are trying to implement in our software for that user get, uh, uh, get their uh, aim within, by wasting very less time. So this is why we are developing this kind of machine learning implementation. So what is the design requirement you can say? So for the, based on the 5G, we are trying to develop more sophisticated thing. Whatever the conventional type of feeding are there in most of the commercial packages that we know. We are trying to develop more sophisticated feeding techniques nowadays. And another thing, we are availing in the software time domain and frequency domain data for all kinds of post-processing. We know for the researchers, this data is very important for different kinds of post-processing, for image creation, for machine learning implementation, for several kinds of optimization, or for the creation and creation of data for the addition. Then, hybrid algorithm to reduce the requirement, requirement of computational. For example, you are going to uh, simulate the antennas, otherwise any la electrical large body at that time, it is uh, requiring high uh, computational load. Why? Because a normal system cannot bear that kind of memory. It does not have that RAM or has uh, uh, ROM. So to tackle that thing, what we are doing now, we are working on the computational electromagnetic plus machine learning model that is under the process. So computational electromagnetic, what it will do? Now initially it will do some process and reprocessing result, then remaining machine learning will do. So I will explain in the next slide that thing. Then machine learning approach based on multi-variable and multi-goal. So this is for the, suppose you have, you are uh, fixing your multi-goal for an antenna desired parameters, is this, this thing I want. So for that also we are developing this deep learning model. So currently we are collaborating with so many institutes to develop this thing and we are working with so many interns and our groups also uh, well enough to develop this thing. So this is the introduction to hybrid algorithm that we are working on. So you can see the CEM machine learning model, this is for the computation access. So this is a small example if you see the this uh, 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 block diagram, then you can understand the CEM means computational electromagnetic engine will run for the iteration. So why it is the iteration? Because these computational techniques are based on the iteration. If uh, after this long time of iteration, only we are getting the results. So this will, computational engine will uh, run up to n iteration. Then machine learning engine will run from n plus one to up to n and we will get the desired result. So what happened? Now initially we will get some burden by using this machine. Then uh, once this uh, uh, N iteration will be run, then by using this data, we will train the machine learning model and machine learning model will predict the further data for that it will reduce the overall reducing that. For example, suppose one for a access simulation or for a antenna simulation, you are investing 24 hours. So by using this technique, it will, you will get how much now within two hours or three hours. So it will be less than 10% time it will consume your, uh, it will save your time. Uh, not less than, more than 90% time it will save your simulation time. So <clears throat> this is, this is, these are the primary focus of the current uh, solver nowadays. So few things and few examples I'm going to uh, explain about this, how we are implementing the machine learning things in our solver. So if you see, this is a uh, machine learning model for various uh, machine learning models. This is a multi-layer microstrip transmission line where we have assigned epsilon and epsilon 2. And our network, this is a neural network model. You can see this is multi-layer for certain model. So here only two hidden layers are available and two input only that is epsilon 1 and epsilon 2, that is for the uh, permittivity value of uh, upper layer and down layer is the permittivity value epsilon 2. So by doing this, we are going to calculate the effective dielectric constant 
for this, for which is will be helpful to design this thing very efficiently. So these are the tabular uh, tabular things you can see. Our whenever our colon one is this colon two is this, the trend model we are getting 2.237. Why is the accurate value is 2.242432? If you use the, if you see the error difference, the error difference is very low. So like this we are doing that because the user also access uh, user will be uh, that access that uh, they can generate their own machine model by using available training algorithms and models. Uh, otherwise, they can use also trained model, whatever we have implemented, we will give in the server. They will directly generate data by using the trained model. So this is our focus. So these are the few things. This paper already we have uh, published uh, and that is under the process now. So uh, if you see, uh, this is also a, another a simple thing, machine learning model to predict the uh, radiation resistance of a dipole antenna. If you see, the, this thing is the neural network model. We have taken here three hidden layers, one input layer, and one output layer. So I'm not going into the neural network detail because this is all about the only software, uh, whatever the features are available. So if you see the things, the machine learning, and the Tarang result. Tarang result means it is the Tarang uh, result by numerically we have generated this thing. And the machine learning prediction with Tarang result is heavily accurate. If you see the radiation resistance is quite accurately predicted by our developed machine learning model. So this thing also we can do to reduce our you know simulation time. And this is about the multi-band transactina. So after that, uh, machine learning model, few things I am going to explain about uh, 5G application antenna. So this is about what Sopnil has uh, shown. <coughs> this thing, um, this is a simple antenna, uh, just a microstrip antenna. This is, you can say, multi-band antenna from 3 gigahertz to 10 gigahertz. If you see the S11 parameter, you can see it has four bands continuously. One is at 3.6, another is at 6.1, another is at 8, another is at 10. So this is uh, 3.6 is well applicable for the mid 5G band antenna, and 6 uh, gigahertz it is uh, well applicable for uh, nearby you know high max application. So this is also so uh, we can have this uh, uh, antenna. So this is due to these plots we are making based on the antenna. So we are um, making these plots so that uh, we are getting multiple resonances here. So whatever the result, if you see the current, so this is about the sample current, what we have collected at the port. And if you see, it is properly attenuated, and this is about the sample voltage. The red one is the incident signal, whatever you are using as a source at the port. So this is all about the radiation pattern. So now this is a quad band RFI antenna. This is our recent publication in IEEE. <coughs> so this band is specially <clears throat> designed for the three RFI band and one is the GPS, RF, GPS antenna. So this is the four frequency, 0 0.9 gigahertz, 1.6, 2.4, 5.8. For RFI applications, 0 0.9, 2.4, and 5.8 gigahertz is applicable, and 1.6 band is for the GPS application. So nowadays, the single antenna in mobile, multiple features are there, GPS, hotspot, Wi-Fi, every features are there. To uh, work with a single antenna to perform it better, we need an efficient antenna. Right? While well, that we can say efficiency will be should be high, the multi bands uh, should be there for using with a single antenna. For that, we made a mobile size will be less. Otherwise, space will remain. We can attach any more things in the mobile. So by targeting that, we are we are we are trying to develop the multi band antenna. So these things we are doing. <clears throat> so this is about the microstrip antenna operating at 24.5 uh, gigahertz. So this is uh, for the 5G exactly, which is from the 24 to 40 gigahertz application. So this thing, this is only a simple antenna for a microstrip antenna. Based on the lambda calculation, we have done this thing. <clears throat> and by using this uh, 0 0.787 height of the uh, substrate, bearing the value only 2.2 epsilon value, so exactly you can see the S11 parameter, the radiation pattern, it is having very good gain also nearby 7 dB. So this is the current, sampled current, if you see. So these things we are doing by using time domain solver. And if you see, these are the time domain data. If you see the time domain data with the number of iterations, it is sufficiently attenuated. For that, we can get this accurate result. And this is about the Z11 input impedance. If you see the 25 to 30, the input impedance is very less here. So this is. 
so uh, in the next slide this is for the single band wireable antenna so few examples what we have simulated by using a term, term by showing only so different kinds of design uh, our, our solver is able to solve so this is all about the a single band wearable antenna so uh, s11 is giving here here it is uh, if you see the two ports are available here so whatever the three step of multi layer dielectric uh, layer is available here so it is all about the you can say this is all about the human skin so if you place the antenna above the human skin then there will be three layer like skin muscle bone all layers are there so based on that we are calculating the dielectric values and put by putting that we have simulated this thing this antenna so this antenna specially referred by the ITP antenna and wireless population volume number six so the uh, seven published paper we have done this thing by using your simulation whether it is uh, so so in the next slide this is a wearable flexible antenna this is also a public uh, design from the published antenna that is uh, rf cad paper okay it is published in 2020 recently so whatever now it is a floating floating ground back plane antenna so here uh, this antenna is uh, by using the cp double fed antenna uh, cp double fed you can see so by uh, changing the d uh, uh, d means the height of this uh, ground plane you can uh, change your uh, uh, performance of the antenna so this is for the y max application and you can say for wearable uh, range also it is working for 5.8 gigahertz and um, by the, using the cpw uh, feed we are generating this uh, sample voltage and sample current at the port so these are the few examples what we have done by using our solver and machine learning things already i have explained so this is from uh, this is all from my side okay. thank you thank you for your attention so is there any query from any of the participants Uh, any question from any of the participants? Oh, I think uh, there is no query. I just want to ask Vinar. Uh, we are basically planning for uh, these uh, materials, different types of materials for 5G antennas. So, is it possible to have uh, implementations of those materials or 3D printed, customized, you can say, the material properties and all? Yes, yes, you can customize the material property, those things also are available, yeah. So, uh, other than this S11 and all, uh, which other parameters, uh, uh, as uh, Swapnil has shown some voxel related uh, parameters that we can, for wearable antennas, basically it is required. So, uh, yes. which type of system requirements are there for these analysis? Yes, exactly. System uh, requirement how? is there. So currently yeah. we are uh, we have done everything by using simulation process only. But for the system yeah. requirement and that uh, you know that hybrid so, so nice uh, uh, Yes, uh, ma'am. The system requirement for this uh, particular thing is like uh, for smaller problem it is like fine. We can work on 4 GB RAM uh, laptop. But for yeah, this yeah. kind of problem uh, we recommend 8 GB uh, RAM. I mean, so if it is like Oxel model or like that. But it will not be a problem. Means even if a 4 GB RAM laptop is there, it may take more time in that case. But simulation okay. will be done. It will take simulation more time. And yes. uh, if it is for uh, very high frequencies, suppose uh, in gigahertz so, of uh, 40, 50 gigahertz or 70 gigahertz, then also uh, your software is capable to have uh, yes, ma'am. Similar, uh, uh, you can say system requirements. <clears throat> Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. That depends upon the electrical size of the antenna. If uh, yes, the electrical size of the basically antenna, basically the ratio means... of uh, the wavelength with the yes. dimension. That ratio we need to uh, maintain. Okay. Means, yeah. Many times it happens that when we are having a design at 70 gigahertz, that time the dimension of that uh, particular design will also become uh, smaller. Okay. So if we take the ratio of dimension to the wavelength. So that dimension uh, we can uh, consider. So that we can have means we can design the small problems. Just like yeah. this is like 24 gigahertz antenna, but the size of antenna itself is smaller. So because of that, uh, the mesh number of mesh elements are becoming smaller. So it is even giving the faster performance. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you so much, Swapnil. And uh, if you have any information related to fabrication of these type of antennas of higher frequencies, especially and testing. Yes, ma'am. Uh, 
so uh, yes ma'am we have uh, information about this uh, aspect also we can uh, there is in india there are facilities of uh, measurement at higher frequencies and as these are like more like planar antennas fabrication will not be the issue fabrication we can do easily only the thing is at higher frequency how do we do the measurement and how we know the facility yeah, majorly the measurement and so ma'am uh, in csr i have been working with uh, one and a half year with csr national aerospace laboratory there are facilities available up to 70 gigahertz in anak with tamper there may be yes nal uh, nal bangalore yes nal bangalore so they allow uh, commercial uh, applications yes, like they are, this. suppose we approach them and we want to fabricate our antenna ha huh. uh, they will uh, require that fabricate antenna i have a good contact with them if you want means uh, mm-hmm. i can they have it. measurement technique uh, measurement facility okay uh, fabrication yes. we can do anywhere ha okay. uh, fabrication also they have but uh, they are quite busy with their own work so they will not okay. spend that much time on this fabrication okay. process yeah okay so thank you so much swapnil and nihal for your session on this current software and i hope